Hello, I'm Steve G. Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to Advanced Life Coaching Certification. This program is going to allow you to take your skills to the next level, to expand on what you already know, and to teach you some new concepts, some new ideas, some new approaches to working with clients that you probably haven't thought of before. There are all sorts of ways to do anything, if you think about it. You can do anything you want to do in a number of different ways. So what happens is that people go out into the coaching world and they start doing things a certain way and they get into habits. Well, the advanced program is designed to interrupt that pattern. It's designed to shake that up a little bit because if you've already been working with clients and coaching them, then there's a good chance that you're a little bit set in your ways. So the advanced program comes along and says, hey, why don't you look at other ways of doing what you're doing and see if those ways work? And it also comes along and says, hey, if you haven't started coaching yet and you want to get all the information you can before you start, then here's some more information that you're going to find very helpful. Because what I find at this point when people take advanced life coaching certification is that they are in one of those two categories. Either they've already started and they're a little bit set in their ways and they could use a little shaking up. They could use the concept of being shown something different or they haven't started yet. They haven't yet begun because they want to be as prepared as possible. So whichever category you find yourself in, understand that the Advanced Life Coaching Certification Program is going to help you. It's going to expand on what you already know, or it's going to rock your world a little bit. It's going to rock your world to the point that you see new possibilities, new possibilities in the way you work with your clients. You're going to find, if you haven't already, that not everything works with everyone. Not everything flows smoothly with client A, B, and C. Sometimes it works with A and B, but C comes along and you think you're going to do what you did with A and B and it doesn't work. Why is that? Well, the advanced program is going to help you answer that question. The answer is a little bit longer than a sentence, so the program is going to help you answer that question. Why is that? And what can you do to overcome that? How can you break through that? How can you have a big bag of tricks, big toolbox, if you will, so that you'll have something for everyone, so that you will have a way to get through everyone's resistance and help everyone? So let's talk about what you're going to do. First of all, you understand that you are preparing clients for change. As we look ahead to the program and look into what you're going to be learning, you are preparing your clients for change. Now, this is very important because you're not actually getting in there and forcing them to do anything, are you? You're not making them change. You're not forcing a change. You're not coming along and say, saying, hey, change or else, or else I'm out of here. No, you're preparing them for change. So I'm going to talk about that concept more in depth in this program, how you are a catalyst for change. You are helping them change. You are sparking their interest in changing, but you're not forcing them to change. You're not doing it for them. And realize that once they change, it's not just a change in whatever it is you're working with them on. Let's say you're working on situation A. Well, when you get them to change, when they really change, then they are going to find solutions to things that haven't even come up yet. When B and C come up, or D, E, and F come up, when those situations come up, they're going to be more equipped to handle them because of the change that they underwent when they were pushing through challenge A. That's the one that you helped them with. So you're preparing them for change, a change that's going to have long lasting effects change that's going to be something tremendous that they are going to 
remember you for, they're going to look back years from now and they're going to say, I remember when they helped me with that situation, situation A. Thank goodness for that. So you are paving the way for that. And if you haven't already found out, the concept of preparing clients for change can be a little bit of a challenge because you are preparing them to change their way of looking at the world sometimes. Sometimes the way they're looking at the world is ineffective and it's not getting them what they want. And they fail to realize sometimes that that's what's really standing in their way. So preparing them for change sometimes means getting them out of their own way so they can see what they've caused. They can see what they're creating on a daily basis. And they can get some distinctions. They can start to realize, hey, I don't want that. Or if it's something they're doing the right way, quote unquote right way, the way that works, in other words, then they can say, hey, I want some more of that. And you can prepare them to get more of that into their lives. We're going to talk about challenging areas. Challenge areas or challenging areas, same concept. These are areas that are difficult for the client. They're areas that are a challenge to push through. And everyone's going to come across those areas. And really, I want you to start embracing them. Because if you're thinking that everything's going to be smoothly flowing, you're going to have a little checklist, maybe with some different color highlighters and certain activities that are going to do, and you're going to move them through this uh, flow chart of change, and we're going to get to some if ands. If they do this and they're doing that, then they go here or there, and the flow chart is going to flow smoothly. Well, surprise, it's not always going to work that way. You're going to run across challenge areas all the time. All kinds of challenges are going to come up. Strange challenges even. Sometimes you'll be working with a client and suddenly they won't be able to follow through with a plan because they consulted their psychic. Okay, Now you may consider that strange or out of the ordinary or illogical, but I want to tell you that if it's within the client's framework of their beliefs, then you have to go with it. So, you have to start realizing that it's not you who are going to make this happen. It's your client. You're going to have to get in and work within their belief systems. So, let go of your concepts of things being strange or weird or anything like that and realize that all of these things are just life, life happening. And when life happens, sometimes it presents challenge areas. Guess what's going to happen? You may have already guessed this, but what's going to happen is that you are going to grow. You are going to change. You are going to push through some of your barriers. Sometimes your clients are going to believe more in themselves than you are going to believe in them. Sometimes your clients are going to be set on something. They're going to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it happen. You're thinking, no way in the world are they going to make it happen. You don't say that, of course, but in the back of mind, your mind, you may be thinking that, and then they do it. And you have a breakthrough. You're shocked that they were able to pull that off and you have a breakthrough. So sometimes challenge areas are there for you too, to challenge you, to raise you to the next level, to raise your bar of your expectations for not only your clients, but for yourself. When you raise your expectations for yourself, the clients always benefit because then you start expecting more of them and they start growing and learning. So challenge areas are going to happen. Look forward to them and embrace them. We're going to talk about key questions. Questions, as you probably, hopefully, remember from the basic class, are important. You must have questions that you're asking your clients, and the questions can be refined, get more streamlined, more pinpointed, more laser-focused as you go. Sometimes you have to start broad, the funnel. Remember from the basic class, the funnel, and you narrow it down. Find out what's going on. You hone in on the problem. You figure it out. Now, problem, I like to call those challenges, of course. So you figure out the challenge. You unpack it. You unwind it. You take it apart. You do that with questions. Questions are like little pickaxes. You're standing up sometimes against a big sheet of ice. You have to pick away at it. Questions do that. 
Sometimes you want to use a big sledgehammer. Sometimes you want to use a bulldozer. Sometimes a little pickaxe. But questions come in all shapes and sizes depending on how fine of an area you are moving through. How fine of a, an area of a sheet of ice you're moving through with your questions. So questions are your tools that you're going to use. You're going to teach your clients to ask themselves questions as they break through these barriers, as they pick through and bulldoze through and sledgehammer sometimes through these sheets of ice that show up and kind of freeze them out from the solution. Are you going to show them there's a way through that? The way through that is through questions, not just any questions, not questions that waste time, Questions that are focused and then become more focused and more focused. There's a right way to ask questions. The right way is the way that leads to productive solutions that help you overcome the challenge. So, questions are powerful tools. We're going to talk about key questions that you can teach your clients. These aren't questions you're going to ask them necessarily. And and hide from them until you're ready to share with them. You're going to teach them how to use this technology, teach them how to ask questions. Remember, from the basic program, hopefully the main thing you got from that is that the more you work toward making yourself unnecessary, the better you do, because they realize just how valuable you are. Not only in that challenge, but if you overcome that challenge they're working on, they want you to work on more things. Because you're constantly working to empower everyone around you, that makes you very valuable. So teaching your clients how to ask these questions is part of empowering them. We're going to talk about goals. Key questions would mean nothing without goals. Pushing through challenge areas would mean nothing without goals. Preparing your clients for change? Well, what kind of change are you preparing them for if there are no goals? So goals are very important. They are what this is all about. Your job is to get your client from where he or she is to the goal. And that's it. If they were a piece on a chessboard, you could just move them. If they were a piece on a game board where you just move around, remember the game of life, where you have little little uh, pegs that represent people. You can get children, you get a family in there and move it around. If you could just move them around that board toward the goal, roll the dice, keep moving, that's all you would have to do. But as you find out in the game of life and in the game of life coaching, it's a little bit more challenging than that. Things come up. Pieces don't always just move where you want them to move. So you have all these tools in place. You have the questions. You have the understanding of the challenge areas. You have the preparation that you're going to go through with your clients, prepare them for change. Everything's gearing toward getting them to their goals. That's where this game piece is moving. So you must always keep that in mind. A lot of times when people start working with clients, and I know this from my hypnotherapy practice, things get a little muddy along the way. You start working with them, and they get new ideas. They want to spring off in the left field. They want to go on a tangent. Suddenly, they're not working on this anymore. They're working on that. And you follow them along for the wild goose chase sometimes. My advice to you is to focus on goals. If they keep jumping around, it's going to be hard for them to measure your results. If they keep losing interest in something and focusing on something else, it's going to be really challenging to measure your results and to demonstrate to them that you are actually worth what they're paying you. Getting clients to focus on goals and to continue to focus on goals can be challenging. So I hope you're up for the challenge. In fact, I know you're up for the challenge or you wouldn't be in this program. You wouldn't be this far in the program. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about just how important goals are. Goals are the end of the highway, that what you're focusing on when you're throwing a baseball, you should look where you want the ball to go. When you're kicking a soccer ball, you should look and see where you want the ball to go. That's the goal. That's where you want it to go, whether you're passing it to someone or shooting a goal. You want it to go somewhere. So goals are very important. 
We're going to talk about organizing your business, not just your business, not just your coaching business, but helping your client to organize his or her business as well. Organizing the business that you're working in or organizing your own business. Now, when you think about it, organizing your business, at least initially, may be a very simple task. There may not be a lot to organize, especially if you don't have any clients yet. The idea of organization is always going to follow through from the time that you have zero clients to the time that you have a huge life coaching firm of people working for you. If you want to build it that big, you can. Organization is going to save you. And it's also something you're going to teach your clients, which can save them. Because when you have no clients, you need to be organized in the sense that you get up and you focus on getting clients. You're organized. You've got a game plan. Your goal today is to get up, get out of bed, go find some clients. And when you organize your time, when you spend X number of hours per day on the phone looking for clients, calling for clients, getting referrals and so forth from friends and, and others who could lead you to business clients, then you need, to be, you need to be organized during that. And that same organization that starts you off in the right direction will continue through no matter how far you go. Because when you go further and further, you may think organization becomes more and more important, but it's really the same level of importance. It's very important for you to be organized early on or you'll never get to the point or you have a large firm that you're organizing. If you don't organize yourself to the point where you can get clients, then you don't need to worry about organizing yourself later on because that won't happen. What is going to happen for you is that you're going to organize yourself from the beginning, from the get-go. From the time you have zero clients, you're going to organize yourself so that you can have structured time during which you are going after clients. And that energy is going to carry through. And because you are going to be so organized, you're going to be able to teach that to your clients as well. Not everyone wants the same level of organization. And something that I've learned is that everybody has their own way of organizing. So you're going to have to respect that. Not everyone wants color-coded index cards. Not everyone wants a filing system from A to Z. Not everyone wants to even put things in a file at all. Some people want to do things in ways that are going to be a little shocking to you, but it's their form of organization. So always seek some sort of organization. How about balance? You're going to need balance. If you are going for it, going for it, going for it, trying, 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 attempting, 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 sometimes achieving, what are you really setting up for yourself? Well, first of all, the word trying is a word that I don't really like because trying means you kind of set out not to really do much. Trying. So I like the word doing. But what if you are in the trying zone? What if you find yourself there where you're kind of beating your head against a wall and trying, trying, trying to get clients and it's not working out? What do you need to do? Try harder? No. What you need to do is give yourself a little vacation, even if it's just for an hour or two. Hopefully it's a day or two or more, and you need to clear your head. That's what we call balance. And this is going to help you no matter how far you go. You need balance. When I go somewhere, and I go a lot of places, in the last couple of weeks I've been to Los Angeles, I've been to New York, I've been to North Carolina, and in a couple of days I'm going to Costa Rica. Each of those places I go to, no matter where I'm going in the world, no matter what I'm doing, I have balance. Time for work, time for play. If I'm going to New York, I'm going to go to a museum and I'm going to do some networking with some people I need to meet. I'm going to Los Angeles. I'm going to do a TV show about hypnosis. I'm going to talk to some producers and so forth. And I'm also going to meet some friends. I'm going to drive the Pacific Coast Highway. I'm going to have some fun. Costa Rica, I'm going to do a presentation, I'm going to network with people, but I'm also going to enjoy parasailing or whatever's available where I am. That's what we call balance. 
And you need to learn balance because so many people get so caught up in going for it, going for it, going for it, pushing, pushing, pushing. What happens? Even if you are successful, you can burn yourself out. Your mind's going to be saying, give me balance. Throw me a cookie here somewhere. Let's have dessert every now and then. So you need to learn that. I want you to learn that from the beginning. Yes, even when you have no clients, there needs to be balance. You need to have time where you just step away from it all. Say, forget this for now. It's time for fun. I'm going to go swim in the ocean. I'm going to go jog. I'm going to go ride my bike. I'm going to take a little vacation. I'm going to clear my mind. Balance is something that's really going to pay off for you. So I want you to start using it. Like I said, even if you just give yourself an hour or two, take time for yourself. Clear your head. Let go of it all, at least for a little while. Forget about coaching just for a little while and then come back to it and see how powerful you are then. It really goes a long way, but always use balance. What about marketing your business? We're going to talk about marketing your business. And you know, one of the things that I've realized, which really fits in nicely with balance, is that you can market yourself while you're having fun. And I learned this from a good friend of mine back when I lived in Los Angeles. He was in uh, business, I believe it was uh, at the time he was selling uh, T-shirts to uh, to production companies, you know, movie production companies. He was selling them T-shirts and uh, stickers, like bumper stickers and things like that that they could use to market themselves. And my friend, his name's Anil, great guy, he was telling me a story one time about how he does things. And I thought he was kidding when he first told me. I really did. I didn't quite understand at the time. It was about 10 years ago he was telling me this. He said, you know, Steve, when I go and meet with a client at a at one of these uh, movie production places, I take them out to lunch and I don't talk about business at all. I just take them out to lunch and we have a good time and I talk with them and you know what happens? They bring it up. They bring up business and then I lead into it. That's what he does every time. He markets his business by just going out to lunch with people. That's how he does it. So my point here is that when you look at the word marketing, it doesn't always come in the shape and form that you think it comes in. Sometimes it fits in really nicely with balance. Sometimes you can be off in another country that you don't live in, hanging out with some people, just having fun and not bringing up business at all. What happens next? They will bring it up and then you can talk about it. So marketing yourself doesn't have to be this pounding, driving, forceful thing, this big truck that you're behind that's moving full speed ahead down the highway. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be something that you integrate into the balance, into the flow of your life. So we're going to talk about that. But realize that marketing is something that you will begin and you will never stop. It always continues. Look at the McDonald's commercials on TV. McDonald's, a very successful franchise for many years. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the food they serve, but my point here is that you will see on any given day, you will see a McDonald's commercial. Why is that if it's so successful? Why would they show commercial after commercial every day? Because they understand that marketing is something that you continue and you always do to always stay in the public's eye. So we're going to talk about that. 